So we're starting out with Into Now, which is a TV app, right? You're going to show this off. Right. So Into Now, it's uh, kind of like Shazam, uh, but uh, it's for TV. So if you're watching a TV show, you just press this button, and then it starts uh, to listen to the. It's listening to my voice, but if the TV was on, it would. So if we were acting out a scene from Welcome Back, Cotter, it would recognize. Right. It, it would recognize that it was Welcome Back, Cotter, and through its database, and then you can check in. Uh, without doing anything other than pressing that green button. And it's this whole idea of checking in to shows while you're watching them. Um, and then you can also see what, who, who else, what other friends you ch checked in with, and it kind of makes it a little bit more social. Well, you can add your Twitter feed. You can add your Facebook people. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has a discovery feature as well, which allows you to find uh, shows that may be interesting to you or are also interesting to your friends. I think if you scroll by or press the button there, you'll be able to see it. Right. So. I am. Uh, I love the feature. I love the the fact that it makes it so easy to check in. That I don't have to look through a guide, or um, you know, all I have to do is press that that green button. But I feel like it's 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 a little bit gimmicky because unlike Shazam, which does the same thing for music, where I don't know maybe what the song is, but I want to know what the, what the name of the song is so I can buy it. I know what TV show I'm watching usually, um, and you know it helps you check in a little bit more. But I kind of wish it had a little bit, a few more of the social features that we see in some of the other apps. I mean, it's abundantly clear they basically need to sell the technology to find TV shows to someone. They'll, they could sell it to one of the apps that we're talking about later on, and then they'd, they'd make a little bit of money and just kind of get out of the space. Check-ins on TV, I don't, I don't really get it. Yeah, I'm going to give it a die as is, but I think if they uh, evolve, you know, they could resurrect themselves. And I'm going to give it a die if they can sell themselves, uh, sell that type of technology. That's actually really cool technology. You can watch a show, you can find out what it is instantly. That's actually really cool. I don't think the program, I don't think the application as it stands is any good. So let's go to the next app, which is Yap TV. And Yap TV is uh, similarly, uh, you look, you can see what shows are trending right now. So people, are, a lot of people are talking about the Super Bowl. You can click on the Super Bowl, and then you see this. This is really cool. You see a stream of people who are tweeting about the show, about the Super Bowl, and, and you can do the Colbert Report. And any show that you're watching, there's a guide that shows you what, what shows are on right now. And there's little polls that you can take, and there's chat rooms, um, et cetera. I think this is a very sort of compelling application um, that lets you, uh, in a sense, watch TV with your friends who aren't in the room or with other people. I would say the coolest thing is sort of like this living room motif. You're sitting with, it's, it's, been, it's been a dream uh, for TV folks for years. If you want to sit with all your friends, you're sitting with your girlfriend who's across the country or whatever, you guys can both watch a show, you can type, you can talk, you can, you can see what's going on, you can see if your friends are watching. I think this, this would have come in handy like during the last season of Lost or something when I was on Twitter trying to figure out what that dog was or whatever. Right. Everyone is, I, I, I did this the other night with uh, Colbert. And uh, you know everyone was uh, retweeting the jokes, and it's almost like you're watching with uh, your friends, and and you. He's a talk. real jerk and talks during the right. show. Right. I mean, in a way, it's kind of uh, <laughs> apps for lonely people. <laughs> <laughs> well, TV is a is a lonely, lonely medium. It is a lonely medium, and this makes it a little bit less lonely. So I'm going to give this a, a fly. I really I'm, like. This I'm app. giving it a fly, and uh, they just did, recently did an update, so it's uh, it's getting a little better too. Yeah, it's getting a little bit better. Okay, so then the last app. We're All right. Uh -oh. oh, I think this is uh, Trevor Stout, uh, CEO of Yap TV, and uh, <laughs> thrilled to be on the show here. And uh, have to say, I think you guys are both brilliant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Trevor. Trip. Welcome to the show. Well, not, <laughs> neither of us actually watch TV, so we don't understand what what all these Super Bowls and things are about anyway. So, but what <laughs> what do you see as sort of your your the main feature? There's a lot of uh, there's there's a number of apps that are either somewhere in between a guide for TV and um, sort of a social application for TV. And it seems like Yap TV really focuses more on the social side. Obviously, you have a guide as well, but it's not really about finding TV shows. It's more about talking about the shows that you're already watching. But can you tell me a little bit about you know, your product decisions, about you know, what are you trying to emphasize? No, I mean, absolutely, and, and I, I actually think you, you nailed it. Uh, you know, when you look at social TV, I mean, obviously it's a huge category, and this, you know, this fusion of, of media, mobile, and social, I think, is, is going to have an enormous impact. But, uh, you know, our focus, you know, there's been a lot of uh, emphasis around the check-in model, right, and, you know, checking into a show, but you really can't start interacting until after you check in. And, you know, even with the audio detection, you know, it, it is a nice feature, I mean, you know, 
but uh, you know, it takes 15 seconds to get into a show. So what we wanted to do is make it really easy to get into a show. Our presence detection is, is automatic. It's more like a real-time messaging, so you can see which of your friends are online automatically. And but once you're in a show, you know, it's about that real-time interaction. So how do we create the most engaging social experience? So things like real-time streaming on Twitter. Uh, we lost signal there a second. Uh, you know, real-time streaming uh, of you know, what everybody's saying worldwide on Twitter. We're, we're tracking that for you know, thousands of TV shows, uh, right. you know, interactive chat, polls, you know, things of this nature to, to make it very engaging uh, when you're actually in a show and, and having an interactive TV experience. Right, and that's the big uh, problem with a lot of uh, check-in apps, whether it's TV or location-based. It's uh, what do you do after you check in? And I think that you're, you're well on your way to solving that problem. You're giving people a reason to check in, um, which is great. Um, but can you talk a little bit about you know why this is valuable on the uh, on the other end? I mean, this is a lot of valuable data that uh, you know uh, TV shows and advertisers and marketers I think would would want. But how how do you plan to make money off of this? You know, I think that if you look at you know people's gateway or interaction with the, with a the television, right? It's you know started with a paper TV guide and then it it went to a remote control with a menu. Which is still, you know, neither are a great way to interact and, and engage with with content that's on TV. So we think the the tablet is is completely going to reinvent that category and smartphones, right? It's just, it's a great way to interact, uh, you know, with with TV and you know the things that you can do with that. I mean, obviously, creating the an engaging social experience so you can interact with your friends, you know, is just the start. But you know, if you look at the type of you know interactivity you can create around a TV show, interactive advertising, I mean, I think the future. Is just is massive in terms of the opportunity, you know, with this type of a new gateway to to television. So, what's the end game here? Are you going to be selling to, I don't know, to a Google TV? You guys are going to try to become the TV guide of the online world, that sort of thing. What's the, uh, what's the goal? What's the goal for the company? I suppose. You know, look, we're we're here to to build a big company. Uh, you know, just as Google is the gateway to the web, we think that you know there's going to be a, a social TV, interactive TV platform that. Is going to be the new gateway to TV, and, and we want to be that company. Uh, we think it's it's a massive opportunity, and uh, you know, there's people are doing it today. It's just it's difficult. You, know, you can go to Twitter and you can search, you know, for TV shows. People are checking into Facebook. I mean, TV is is inherently social. So there's just millions of people, you know, already online performing this activity. And how many people and are you are actively using your app? How many people are actively using it? You know, we haven't released any numbers, but I will say, uh, you know, we put out the. Uh, iPhone app in December, and I mean literally just tens of thousands of downloads. We've been as high as the the top twenty five in the entertainment category in the uh, in the App Store. Yeah, you know, as, as a free app, it's a free app for for fans, show fans. Okay, well, great. Well, months. we like what you're doing. Thanks for uh, joining us. Oh well, thank you. I think that was really the first double fly that we. The first heard. double fly, yeah. <laughs> okay, so our last uh, app that we're going to do is is an app from uh, from FiOS. I'm a FiOS customer. And you can download it's a free app, and it's just the program guide, um, you know. And the thing that's cool about it is that I use this now instead of actually clicking through on the screen because it's really annoying, when, especially when you're watching with other people. You know, you have to minimize the the actual uh, window, uh, and uh, because you're always looking for something else to watch, right? Sure. Um, so you can you can you can actually tune it from if if I was at my in my living room, I could I could tune it through the Wi-Fi. Um, with this app, and there's there's you know on demand, there's a guide, there's there's stuff that's trending and that's hot, um, and but you can't drive everybody crazy by tuning it from here, right? So if the kids are watching like Dinosaur Train and you change the channel right now to Judge Judy, they won't notice. They won't know. You know it's, it's it's all based on my local network and like whether it's talking to my my set top okay. box or not. And you know other other uh, companies are doing this well. Comcast has Xfinity, which is mm -hmm. actually. Uh, you know, goes one step beyond. You, it actually allows you to stream on-demand movies right to uh, the iPad, which kind of combines like a Netflix streaming um, app with the guide. And I think that that's a very powerful combination because you know you're already uh, a subscriber, mm -hmm. and this just makes. Even though the app itself, I've got to say, is um, is kind of it needs a lot of work. I mean, if you look like if you scroll, there's this lag time. Well, you know, well, of, I mean, it's it an app made by Comcast, so it's right. going to be horrible in the first place. All set-top boxes are horrible by definition, and I can't imagine that some of that DNA hasn't gone into this uh, into this application. the The value of this is that it basically changes the way you use your cable box. So you, before you had that huge, stupid remote 
uh, maybe used a Harmony remote or something like that. Now you have this. And uh, the interesting thing is that everybody's going to start building these things out because it just makes sense. You have this third screen in the, in the, in the living room that people are using and, uh, and they just tap on a TV show and they can start it up. Same thing goes for Google TV. Mm -hmm. Harmony, they actually, or they review, they actually have an app for Google TV now so you can actually control your Google TV that same way. Right, and it's, uh, the, the, the thing is that the uh, UI for TV is so horrible that even a, even a, a crappy app is ten times better, mm -hmm. and you can uh, you know, and, and you can use it as your remote control, and it's just such a better experience. Even though it, it needs to improve, and it will improve over time, um, you would think, because as more and more subscribers no, use it, it, gonna, it will never will. It'll never will. It'll, it'll just well, I, I think to suck. I, I think that there, you're probably going to get uh, on-demand streaming on this probably. as well, which uh, which will be great because then you know, then you, you can you could uh, it, it becomes a second TV. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it a fly. Uh, just because I use it all the time. I'm going to give it a fly as well, but I just hate it because I don't have FiOS where I am in Brooklyn. Yeah. So if I hate it, but I'm going to give it a fly. Well, I mean, it's that, that's the future, and it has to be done. So that's, that's why I'm flying it. Okay. So let's go watch some TV. All right. All right. Good show. <laughs> that's it for this week.